The sun is kind of a big deal. Yes, the sun is. There's our wonderful, wonderful solar system. They're all a bunch of characters. The sun is kind of a big deal by Nick Selleck. All of the planets and the sun live together in the solar system like a big family. The sun is our solar system's very own star. Seriously, the sun is an actual star. It's the only star in our solar system and it sits right in the center, holding everything together. There's the sun and Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter. Uh, could I have your autograph? It's um for my uh, moon, Callisto. <laughs> and then Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So what's in the solar system besides the sun and the planets? There are dwarf planets, five rocky bodies that are smaller than planets, asteroids, small rocky objects that move around between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt, meteors, streaks of light created when pieces of space rock or metal speed into Earth's atmosphere. If you see a shooting star, it's actually a meteor. Comets, icy rocks that shoot through space and leave a trail of gas and dust. Aliens, okay, maybe not, but we're always looking for them. Oh, hey, guess what? Our solar system is just one of many solar systems that exist. A galaxy is a group made up of billions of solar systems. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. There are billions of galaxies out there and together they make up the universe. Can you count to a billion? I cannot count to a billion. Okay. The sun is the biggest thing in the solar system. It's even bigger than Earth. Way bigger. Way, way bigger. Like over a million times bigger. Ow, that burns. This is why I keep my distance. So this teeny, teeny, tiny little blue dot is the scale of the Earth in relation to the gigantic sun. Pretty amazing. There are much bigger stars than the sun, but all of the other stars you see are really, 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 really far away. Really? Really. The other stars are in totally different solar systems and have their own planets. Earth is the th third planet away from the sun. Remember Earth? It's that little planet where you and everyone you know lives. All right. So let's meet the planets in our solar system. And the sun's giving them a thumbs up. Mercury, I'm the baby. Venus, I'm the hottest planet. Earth, I have cats. Mars, hey, did someone lose a rover? Jupiter, I'm gassy. Saturn, hula hoop champion. Uranus, I spin sideways. And Neptune, it's cold out here. Pluto used to be a planet, but scientists decided it didn't quite fit the definition. Now it is called a dwarf planet. Sorry, Pluto. And here's Pluto. Uh, I'm still here, guys. Hi, it's me, Pluto. <laughs> the planets move around the sun like a big racetrack in space. Each planet has its own special path that it follows. That's called its orbit. Some planets are faster than others, but each one stays in its lane. All right, so here's the sun. I see a bit of Jupiter, there's Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And it looks like they're racing around the sun and Neptune says, I really feel like I have to go farther than you guys. And guess who's watching from the bench? Pluto, that's right. <laughs> it takes a whole year for Earth to go all the way around the sun. January, Happy New Year! February, March, April. Do you know how many times you have been around the sun? May, June. Hint, how old are you? 
July, August, September, October, November, December. So how old are you? That's how many times you've been around the sun. Isn't that amazing? That is something to celebrate for sure. So what does the moon do all year long? While Earth is going around the sun, the moon is spinning around Earth. The moon goes around Earth 12 or 13 times in one year. That's about once a month. Depending on where the moon is in its cycle, we might only see part of it. The rest of the moon is in shadow. When we see the whole thing, it's called a full moon. So here's our wonderful planet Earth. And these are the phases of the moon that they go through the first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, new moon, waxing crescent. The sun never stops working. It does a ton of important jobs for Earth. In fact, we wouldn't be around without the sun. Um, are you sure you all need this from me? A very long list. Yes, every second of every day, please and thank you. Why is Earth so important? Uh, two words, plants and animals. That's three words. Uh, I'm still waiting on that autograph. <laughs> Ooh, what's this line for? The sun gives us light so we can see, but it takes about eight minutes for light to get to us because the sun is so far away. Oh, but it's worth the wait, Earth says. Earth spins around in a full circle every day. Night, day. Hi again, how was your night? <laughs> that is why when it's nighttime for you, it's daytime on the other side of the world. Oh, hey, guess what? As one side of Earth spins away from the sun, it looks like the sun is setting there and it becomes night. As that side of Earth spins back toward the sun, it looks like the sun is rising and you guessed it, it's breakfast time. The sun is always there even when you can't see it. Sometimes it looks dark outside during the day because the sun is behind the clouds, but it is still there. Hey, move it clouds, I was making shadow puppets, says the sun. Once in a while, it gets dark in the daytime because the moon gets in the sun's way. That's called a solar eclipse and it only lasts for a little while. So here's the moon. Hey, look what I can do. And the sun, yes, yes, we are in very impressed. Now keep moving. <laughs> Keeping us warm is another really important part of the sun's job. The sun is hotter than you can imagine, way hotter than fire. Its temperature reaches millions of degrees at the center. Ah, oh, look, it's giving. Earth some warm, warm sun. Some places on Earth are warmer than others. The parts of Earth closest to the equator are the warmest. The parts of Earth closest to the North and South Poles are the coldest. So here's the equator, this imaginary red line here that Earth is holding. And here is our North Pole and there is our South Pole. So warmer and colder. Oh, hey, guess what? See that red line around the middle of Earth? It's an imaginary line people invented called the equator. It separates the top and bottom halves of Earth. So now we know it's colder near the poles of Earth and warmer near the equator. But why? Well, the parts of Earth near the equator are getting the sun's heat from straight on. The North and South Poles are getting the same amount of sunlight, but it gets spread out over a bigger area. Since these places have to share the sun's heat, they don't get quite as warm. So North Pole, less direct sun, equator, more direct sun, and South Pole, less direct sun. While Earth is moving around the sun, it is spinning on a tilt. That's why we have seasons. There are four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Because of Earth's tilt, the top half and the bottom half of the world experience the seasons at different times. When the bottom half of Earth is tilted toward the sun, it is summer there. 
This also means that the top half of Earth is tilted away from the sun, which makes it winter there. So bottom half tilted toward the sun. Happy summer, everyone. Top half tilted away. What do you mean? It's winter. The sun's work isn't done yet. Every day, the sun also has an important job in the water cycle. Ooh, condensation, precipitation, evaporation. What exactly happens during the water cycle? So during evaporation, heat from the sun causes water to mix with air, turning into vapor. That's called evaporation. I'm floating. Then there's condensation. The vapor gathers together to make clouds. That's called condensation. Finally, the water comes back down as rain or snow. That's called precipitation. Uh-oh, I'm leaking. Ha-ha, <laughs> we're back, woohoo! The water cycle is important for all living things, but especially for plants. Plants need water and sunlight for photosynthesis. That's a big word, but it's also a really big job. Photosynthesis is when a plant uses light from the sun, water from the water cycle, and carbon dioxide from the air to make food for energy to help it grow. Oh, hey, what can I do for you today, says the sun. Oh, a little uh, photosynthesis, please. So here's a little plant. There's food and water. A little carbon dioxide coming out of the blow dryer. Uh, ooh, and it's growing. I like totally love dirt. Dirt is awesome. I love it. What do I owe you? And the sun says, oxygen. <laughs> During photosynthesis, plants make oxygen. That's what animals and people need to breathe. Take a deep breath. <sighs> you just breathed in a lot of oxygen. Oxygen doesn't have any taste, but it's always there and we can't live without it. If the sun wasn't helping out with photosynthesis, we wouldn't have oxygen. Oh my goodness, thank you plants. And this plant says, you're welcome. The sun is pretty great. It's always around keeping the whole solar system together. It gives us light and keeps us warm. It helps bring us rain and grow plants to produce the oxygen we breathe. It's such a big part of our lives that we wouldn't be able to live without it. The sun works really hard to help us out and that's kind of a big deal. And Earth is sun's number one fan. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. The sun is kind of a big deal. It really is. And we are so thankful for all the things in our solar system and universe and on earth that help us. And it's really cool that we are part of such a big, amazing system. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.